third mode of catalysis uses nucleophiles as the catalyst. And nucleophiles we might also call Lewis bases. Given what we've talked about with Bronsted base catalysis, you may think that Lewis bases operate similarly. However, the role of a nucleophilic catalyst is a little bit paradoxical. Rather than activating another nucleophile, the role of a nucleophilic catalyst is to convert a not as good leaving group typically into a better leaving group. What can happen is the addition of a nucleophile to a substrate or the substitution of one nucleophile for another may turn the catalyst into a good leaving group within the substrate. And if that resulting leaving group is a better one than the one in the original substrate, then catalysis results. So let's look at an example of this in the context of the SN2 reaction, which we've been focusing on so far. And let's take, for example, an alkyl chloride reacting with some nucleophile, say a secondary amine, to form an alkylated product. So an alkylated ammonium ion like this. The uncatalyzed process is just a simple SN2 elementary step in which the amine nitrogen donates a lone pair to the electrophilic carbon or R group and Cl departs with a pair of electrons. Remarkably, when we use these same conditions with a little bit of iodide anion added, we get the same product, but the reaction occurs much more quickly. And it's important to note that the iodide is not added in stoichiometric amounts. So maybe it's something like five mole percent. So if we use one mole of the alkyl chloride we've only got 0.05 moles of iodide in the reaction mixture. So it's a catalyst. It's used in substoichiometric amounts, and it remains in the reaction mixture from the beginning to the end of the reaction. So this is catalysis. Iodide is a terrible Bronsted base, so this doesn't look like Bronsted base catalysis. For example, I- minus absolutely cannot deprotonate the nitrogen. Instead, iodide is acting as a nucleophile itself. In the first step of the catalyzed mechanism, iodide engages with the alkyl chloride and an SN2 step, and this creates an alkyl iodide intermediate. What this has done is change the chloride leaving group into an iodide leaving group. Iodide is a better leaving group than chloride because of its larger size and its polarizability, its ability to disperse negative charge within the larger I atom as opposed to Cl. This makes the next SN2 step with the amine faster. And notice that when the amine comes in to displace the iodide in the SN2 step, this regenerates the catalyst, kicks off I minus, and generates the product ammonium ion. So this is catalysis. This I minus that's kicked off in the second SN2 step can engage with another molecule of RCL and restart the cycle. This is the basic idea of nucleophilic catalysis. The introduction of the catalyst the nucleophilic catalyst paradoxically establishes a better leaving group in the substrate than the one that was present originally. And this first step may be disfavored, and this emphasizes the point that disfavored steps are expected in the course of catalytic mechanisms. The disfavored first step lowers the activation energy of the second step such that the overall activation energy of the process is lower in the catalyzed case relative to the uncatalyzed case. Another example of a nucleophilic catalyst that you may encounter is this heteroaromatic molecule in which we have a pyridine with a dimethyl amino group para to or across from the nucleophilic nitrogen atom in the pyridine. This is called DMAP or dimethyl amino pyridine. And DMAP is nucleophilic at the nitrogen within the ring. When that nitrogen donates its pair to some electrophilic atom, let's just call it R, that nitrogen is now positively charged, and this is actually a great leaving group. Oftentimes it's a better leaving group than what was present on the electrophile originally. This facilitates catalysis. So DMAP is often used, for example, in nucleophilic acyl substitution contexts where we've got some maybe decent leaving group like a carboxylate within an anhydride. DMAP can displace the carboxylate, and this accelerates nucleophilic acyl substitution of the anhydride.